Hey folks, Jeff with Assigner.com here. If you're a referee or an umpire and you're new to Assigner.com, then you are in the right place. This video is a recording of a recent Zoom call that we did with one of our customers, specifically covering how the system works from a referee's perspective. We do make a couple of mentions of Steve, so if you're wondering who Steve is, Steve is an assigner for the particular group that we're working with. We cover a little bit of everything here from setting up your availability, adding a bank account, accepting and declining games, as well as how the mobile app works. If you have any questions, please reach out to our support team and we'd be happy to help you out. So just, just to kind of, so in terms of kind of getting started with Assigner, my guess is that some of you have already, um, already have accounts. So we are um, in use with uh, MLS Next. And so if you work with uh, the officials management group and, and the things that they do, then, uh, then likely you may, you likely would already have an account. Um, if you don't have an account, then, uh, then I believe the way that things are set up right now is that Steve would uh, create an account for you, push out a new account email, uh, we've got kind of a sample of what one looks like. It's going to look something like this. It's just going to say a new, new assigner account created. You would click the button that's in that particular email, and then you'd be able to use that to uh, to set up your password. Uh, if you're a referee that works for more than one organization, so if uh, if you do work for for somebody other than Steve and they're also on a signer, um, you do have you will have the capability to be able to uh, switch between different the the different organizations. So I think it's a I can't remember what the exact terminology is with uh, with game officials, but, um, and I think with this person that I'm logged in as right now, she's only, uh, she only has access to one organization, but, um, if you're on the website, what you'd be able to do is just click your name in the upper right hand corner. And then you'll see over here on the right, you'll see, uh, the names of other, other organizations. So, um, so what we'll kind of do is to, so I guess the first step is that once you get that email, uh, you'll be setting up your password. Um, and then also, uh, once you have, um, some other so other setup steps that I would uh, definitely recommend that you do um, would be to the first thing would be to check your profile. Just kind of make sure that that the information that you have that is that is on file in terms of address, phone number, uh, travel restrictions, anything like that, that it's actually accurate. Um, if you are doing U.S. soccer, and I know that I think you guys do kind of a mix of uh, high school and not high school. Uh, if uh, what we will typically do also is that we do have integration with the U.S. Soccer Federation, so. Um, if you if you are U.S. Soccer certified and you don't see your information here, there should be a button here where you can actually look up uh, look up your information and um, and we'll kind of ping out to U.S. Soccer and pull that pull that information in from uh, specifically from the Learning Center. Um, so I would start typically with the profile. Um, kind of the next step I would also do is I would set up your availability. So the one thing that that uh, depending on the platform that you're coming from, uh, this might be a little bit different. Um, a signer assumes that you are not available unless you go in and um, and set the days and times that you are available to work. Uh, for some groups, they really like this. Some groups, to be honest, they don't. Um, but we kind of just uh, took made a decision, and this is sort of what the way that things are are set up. Um, so what you might see when you log in to take a look at your availability is something that something that looks like this. So you would see a um, see a calendar. It's got a bunch of red X's on it. Um, and so, um, so what you can do to, to when, so what you would do is to, uh, indicate what your availability is, uh, by, uh, by clicking on the day. So, um, so to, to turn a day from not available to available, just click the, uh, click the day and it'll, it'll toggle really easy to do that. Um, you can get more specific if you want to. So if you wanted to, uh, let's say, uh, be more specific on the Saturday that you're not available just all day, you're available for, um, let's say part of the day. If you click this edit times and notes down here at the bottom, um, then what it does is rather than turning that entire day on or off, what it allows you to do is to, to be more specific. So um, so right now I'm not available on March 9th, but let's say I'm, I want to be available from 8 a.m. to noon. I can also add another time by clicking the button, say 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, the other thing that you can also do is that you can leave notes um, on specific days. And so that is similar to what is what's in game officials. And so your um, assigners will be able to see notes that are left that you leave for them on specific days. So if you want to, um, it's really up to your assigner in terms of how they how they use that. But I think that a lot of groups so that if they're if you want to be available, let's say only for a specific location, um, then this might be where you would where you would indicate that. So um, so we'll say only at Martin Stadium, something like that, and then click to save to to be able to change that for for a specific day. Um, so that's kind of how that, that part works. The other thing that you can also do is if you would prefer to start from a calendar where you are available every day, 
and then just remove the days that you are not available to work, you can absolutely do that as well. It is really easy to do that. So what you would do on the availability page is you can indicate the date range. I'm looking at March just because this is uh, just because I am. So we'll, we'll, let's say that I want to make myself available every day from March 1st through the end of May. So all I would do is I would just put in the date range and then click save. And then what it's going to do is it's going to change all of those red X's that indicate that you're not available. And it will make those into, into green check marks, which indicate that you are available. So if, so if this is kind of the way that you would prefer to do this, now what you can do is you can go in and click and just remove the days that you are not available to work. So let's say that I'm not available Thursday, Friday, Saturday here, and maybe the Sunday, Monday over here. Um, then I can just click those days and remove them and then you're done. So um, so it is pretty uh, pretty quick and easy to be able to uh, to set up your your availability. And obviously your assigners really like that when that that information is kept up to date because then they know when to assign you and, and when not to. So uh, the other thing that you can also do as well is if you work with multiple organizations, um, that it is possible for you to set separate availability for each of the organizations that you work with. So uh, Teresa only works for one uh, for one assigner, um, but if you work for multiple, we do have some directions um, in our documentation on how to do that. Um, and so what you can do is if you click on view documentation, um, and I think it's called, um, I think if, if you just even search on uh, the word availability, You'll see here there's a there's an article here that says availability with multiple organizations. You can follow the follow the instructions here. So the default is that when you are providing availability, unless you split the event, unless you choose to make that change in your account, um, is that it's going to be you are providing availability for Steve plus any other organization on the signer that uh, that you are a member of. So so that's kind of the way uh, that availability works in our system. Um, there is, you can, uh, we'll kind of talk about the mobile app here in just a few minutes, but you can also do pretty much everything within the, uh, within the mobile app and assigner. And, and so availability is definitely one of those, one of those options as well. The other thing that you'll want to take care of, uh, when you log in as well, is that, uh, is to, to, um, if you're going to be paid by direct deposit, um, is to set up your bank account as well as your W9. Uh, and so what you'll be able to do is if you click on the financials menu, um, you'll be able to, there's, there'll be a couple of options here for bank account and W9. Uh, we do ask for your W9 prior. If you don't have a W9, uh, then uh, we will ask for that information prior to, to you actually being able to, uh, to set up that account. Okay. So if you go into, to, to the financials menu under bank account, um, this would be where you'd be able to uh, to set up a set up your bank account. So um, Jesse already has a bank account, but just to show you what the screen looks like, uh, there'd be a button here that to to add it. Um, and then what you would do is you would just give uh, give your bank account a name. Um, so this for Miss for me, let's say this is uh, Jesse's Chase account. You put in the routing number. The account number type that in a second time and just indicate whether it's checking your savings. Um, and then once you click add account, then what that will do is that will um, save that information securely with our vendor that we use for, uh, for, for direct deposit. The other thing that you'll also, we also do is that when you, when you add a new bank account is that we will send a one penny test deposit. That's just to make sure that, that you, um, that you entered your bank account information correctly. There's nothing that you need to confirm it, but we just want to make sure that if there is some sort of an issue with the bank account numbers, that uh, that you provided, we would we would prefer that it fail on our test payment as opposed to um, an actual payment from Steve or or anyone else that might be looking to pay you because getting paid is kind of important. So, um, so in terms of the bank account, that's pretty easy. Um, the other piece is going to be the W nine, um, and so uh, so there and that's also under the financials menu. So it's going to look something like this. So with the W nine, you're just going to provide your your uh, first name, last name, your address your social security number, and then type your name for the signature and then click save. Um, and that's it. So it's pretty, it's pretty easy. So, um, so those are kind of the setup pieces that, um, that I would recommend that you go through uh, once you have your account. So what you're going to do is you check your profile, set up your availability, you'll add a W9 and a bank account. So those are the four things that, that we recommend that, that, that you, that you do to get started. So those are kind of the four things that I would uh, I would recommend that you do to to kind of get things set up 
Um, and then, and then what will happen is that uh, if you, I guess one of two things. So if your assigner is assigning you to games, then, um, then what will happen is that you'll get, uh, once you've been assigned to games, you'll get notified that, um, that you have been um, assigned to a game and that you're to, to log into the system to accept or decline it. So, um, so Teresa has been assigned to some games here. So we'll go under the games menu. Uh, and you can see here that it will kind of break this out into like if I, I might have 15 games coming up, but I've only got three games that are unconfirmed. It's going to kind of show you uh, what that looks like. Um, and so in terms of accepting or declining the games, it's pretty easy. You just go over to the right and just look at the game and, and then just click accept or decline um, on that particular game. So we're going to accept the first couple of games here. I'm going to leave a couple of these because we'll actually accept or decline those from within uh, from within the mobile app. But um, but then also if you um, if you decline a game, uh, the system will typically ask you for a reason. So you you may have to to tell Steve why you're not able to uh, to assign that particular game. Um, there typically also is a uh, a setting in the site that if it's within a certain number of hours of game time that you may not be able to accept it. So if you don't see a decline button here, it means that it's it's a uh, what what Steve would consider to be a short notice. Uh, turn back for that particular game. And so in that point, if, if if you don't see a decline button, then you need to reach out to Steve or whoever your assigner is and let them know that you're not able to 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 uh, accept that game at this point. So we'll go in and, and so accepting or declining games looks like that. Um, and then um, and then once the games are are completed, depending on how the site is configured, you might be asked to complete a complete a game report. Um, those are pretty straightforward. So if you click on game reports, so it's going to look something like this. The um, the game report that you you fill out may look a little bit different, um, but basically what you would do is go to the game reports menu. There'll be a button at the top of the page that says new report, and then it'll ask you for, uh, it'll show you your recent list of games. You just choose that game in the list, um, and then it'll take you right to the game report page. You, know, you fill out the score, um, and then and then any information about that particular game that's that's relevant. So. Um, so that's kind of what what that looks like after the game. Um, and then and then, of course, the important part is getting paid. So um, in terms of the the frequency of when uh, people when uh, officials are paid, it's completely up to the to the to the group that is paying you. So whether it's the league or whether it's the uh, whether it's uh, Steve paying you, I'm not sure because I can't remember exactly how that's set up, but um, it's kind of up to them in terms of uh, how how often that happens and what the what the schedule is. So we do get a fair number of questions of like, hey, I did games seven days ago, 10 days ago. Like, how come I haven't been paid yet? Uh, we don't have the answer to that one because we're not the ones that are actually pushing the button to to make money move. So um, so you so sadly, those questions are all going to go back to you, Steve. I know that you're thrilled about that, but that's just sort of the way it goes. So um, so in terms of the turnaround. So what happens is that when once. Uh, payment has been initiated to you. Uh, once that once that button has been clicked to start the the process moving, then you're gonna get an you're gonna get an email saying, "Hey, uh, I'm you've got a payment on your way." It'll typically give you a short description of what's what is in that payment, um, and then you will have um, and then and then it will also tell you when you can expect to see that in your bank account. Um, our typical turnaround for um, for payments is about two business days. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit longer depending on uh, what what time that that payment was submitted banking holidays weekends any of um, any of that kind of stuff um, but it'll look something like this so if you go into the financials menu under payments received it's actually going to show you the payments that have been initiated and this will actually if you work with multiple organizations that are paying you through our platform it will actually show all of them across it will show you the things that are that are being paid through through the groups that Steve works with as well as other groups on a signer, so MLS Next, uh, the officials management group, any of that kind of stuff. So if you click through on the descriptions of any of these, it will tell you exactly when you can expect to see payment. So this is actually one that where where uh, Jesse has already been paid for this. So in this case here, it's saying that it was deposited on September 22nd. If it's something that's in process, it'll tell you when you the the expected deposit date as opposed to as opposed to when it actually deposited because. Um, cause that's sort of the status of, of that particular one. Um, and then once the, once the funds hit your bank account, you'll get a second notification from a signer to say you've been paid. Um, if you check very first thing in the morning, it, you might not see it depending on your bank schedule. So I would recommend just waiting a couple of hours, um, and checking again. 
if uh, if you don't see it, if you log in immediately as soon as you get the notifications, because sometimes those notifications do come out a couple of hours before your bank actually releases those funds specifically. So, so, so in terms of the website, that's kind of about it. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll just show the uh, we'll show the mobile app here for a couple of minutes, just so you can see what that looks like, and then um, and then we'll we'll open it up to whatever uh, whatever questions that you might have. Um, all right, so this is kind of what the mobile app looks like. So what you're going to see when you log in is it's going to have a list of your games. This this list of games is actually, um, it would be any any games that are assigned to you, regardless of whether it's Steve or where, whether it's another organization. So if you work for MLS Next, um, then you're going to see a mix of games from Steve, games from MLS Next, or any other group that, that you work with. Uh, it'll Up at the top, if you have games that you haven't accepted or declined yet, it's going to show you. Um, and so it's just a matter of touching the accept or decline uh, button to uh, to be able to uh, to do that. In terms of what the game detail looks like, is it something? It looks something like this. So it'll show you the assignments. Uh, it'll show you specifically who you're working with. It will also show you. You can be able if you click through, if you touch through on any of the the names of the officials, it will take you to their uh, to their contact page. And so if they've shared their their mobile number, you'll be able to see that or make a phone call to them if you need to or text them. Um, then also we'll, there's, uh, there's also, uh, if the venue has an, has an address, we'll, we'll provide a, a map as well. There's a, there'll be a button down here that you can't see that, that allows you to get directions and it'll just take you to whatever, whatever your preferred mapping application is on, uh, on your specific phone. So, uh, we do send a, a fair number of notifications through the mobile app as well. Um, they always come by email, but the, but they'll, you will additionally get them as a mobile notification. So anytime that you've been assigned to a game. Anytime a game changes, if you if you uh, if a game's canceled, anything like that, that you'll get notifications. Uh, we also send reminders to you, uh, both the day before as well as the day of, uh, for uh, for games that are scheduled, just so that you don't forget and that you actually uh, are able to to make those games. So, so there is a directory in here as well. Uh, kind of looks something like this, and and so it will show the kind of the detail on that. Um, if you are um, it sounds like I think Steve does use uh, game requests. Um, if that's the case, then you'll have a tab up at the top that says unassigned games. And then what you'll see is a list of uh, games that are that are unassigned that you could um, that you could request. And so um, this screenshot doesn't show it, but what you'll see here on a game that that you are permitted to request is that you'll you'll just see a little little green label that says request game and it's got a little green hand right next to it, like you're raising your hand that you're looking for a specific game. Um, and so you can touch that to request the game. Um, and then what happens is that we periodically will let Steve know that that he's got games that have been requested. Um, and then um, and then he'll go in and and assign you. He'll either assign you to the game or he'll assign somebody else. But either way, we'll let you know either to say you've been assigned to the game or if he if he assigns somebody else, we also let you know about that too. So um let's see here so availability this is what the availability screen looks like it looks a little bit different than what it is on the um, on the website but the function is totally the same um so what you would do is you would just touch the day so like on the the 23rd here i would touch the day um and then it would have a button here that i could that i could click to be or touch to be able to to turn my availability on or off you can also do um specific times you can add notes uh pretty much with the in the same um in the same way so in here as well as if you want to see the the different payments that are that have either been approved or and and haven't been initiated yet or are on their way or to see you know if you had a specific payment on a specific day what games are are um, are included in each of those um, then you can also do that from the from the financials menu um, any of the it once if you want to set up your bank account in w9 uh, I don't think I've got a specific screenshot of this but if you click the if you touch the menu this is the three line menu up at the top there'll be a little window that slides out and 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 it will show you your profile and on your profile page you would be able to uh to set up your w9 and your um and your bank account so you can you can pretty much once you have a username and password you can log into the mobile app you can literally do everything from the mobile app that you would need to as a as a referee so uh 